What happened in, in, in California is that there was a huge influx of, of settlers and soldiers at the beginning of the settlement of Alta California in the seven, late 1760s through the early 1780s. But then after that, there was virtually no immigration from New Spain or what's now Mexico into, um, into Alta California. And so what happens is that most of the land that in Spanish California had been mission land, in Mexican California, it becomes rancho land. And these old families, these dynastic families are the ones who are well situated to take advantage of the secularization process. Most of the land was supposed to go to the indigenous people, but in the actual way that it worked out, most of the land was gobbled up by these, by these families who were already in position to do so in what's now the, the San Pablo area, you know, Richmond, El Cerrito. Well, one of the families that was very prominent in the, in the East Bay area was the Castro family. The Castros are, are one of the, the major families, along with others like the, like the, the Vallejos and the, the Alvarados, settle on the land and occupy it and start their, their ranchos. So in San Pablo, what, the, what they do is they, they raise cattle. And, and actually the hides become the raw materials uh, in the 1830s for what is the first kind of uh, proto-industrial revolution in America, which is shoemaking in, in New England. In fact, a lot of the shoes that are, are produced in New England in the 1830s and 1840s, the leather is from California cattle. So, you know, you don't raise cattle with you and your your wife and your two kids. You need you need labor to to, uh, to do this. And a number of the uh, of the indigenous people of the area, the local uh, the local Ohlone people, uh, had been trained in the mission to be vaqueros, or what we would call cowboys. You know, and then and the the, the, the large mission cattle herds were basically run and managed by indigenous people. The the California rancho was kind of an outgrowth of the Mexican hacienda and what we might think of as a southern plantation in, a, in, the, in the south in the 19th century. The system was the same, but the difference was a difference of degree rather than a difference of kind. Mexico had formally abolished slavery, so the indigenous people who were working there were working there in, in situations of captivity and unable to do anything else except work there, uh, not able to, to, to choose their own uh, livelihood. In 1846, the American Navy came into uh, Monterey and San Francisco. There were some battles here, but by the beginning of 1847, under John C. Fremont and, uh, and other American military figures, California was basically part of uh, the United States. California was admitted as a state in 1850 because gold was discovered in 1848. Uh, and so all of a sudden there are a couple of hundred thousand Anglos here. So the Mexicans who were here when the, uh, when the Americans took over uh, you know, generally resisted. There were, there were some who favored American occupation, but most of them resisted. And then as the, as the land process of, of taking away the land developed, uh, there were a number of, um, of bandidos who tried to uh, resist the American occupation. Tiburcio Vasquez was the most famous, but there were a whole bunch of them. And if you were not an Anglo in 19th century California, you were generally regarded by the Anglos uh, as inferior. And, you know, the kind of, of racial prejudice which was already prominent in the U.S. against African Americans was easily transferred onto, onto Mexicans. You know, they were darker skinned, they were Catholics, and, and neither of those was uh, something that uh, Anglos thought was really a good thing. The kind of, of racial prejudice which was already prominent in the U.S. against African Americans was easily transferred onto, onto Mexicans. And they see that, uh, well, the Mexicans are owning all of these ranchos, and they don't really like that because, you know, they regard Mexicans who had been here for generations, they regard them as kind of foreigners. So as the Mexican community saw their land being taken away, that was a very, very difficult kind of thing. 
And so if the Mexican experiences and culture of California's past was lost, California history would be not accurate.